one of the standard techniques in synthetic chemistry is two-phase separation, a purification measure used when you have a mixture of materials and components of the mixture have different solubilities in two different solvents. Those solvents form two phases, as you see in this image, and help set to separate the components of the mixture. This video talks about two-phase separation, washing and drying liquids, and how to do that with microscale glassware. No synthetic reaction is going to give you 100% product. There will always be other stuff in the reaction with you. There will be product, there will be starting material, there will be solvent, there will be byproducts, there will be gum, goo, and there will be catalyst if you've used a catalyst. You want to separate out your product from everything else that is there. And that separation process, or series of them, is called the workup, and it's always going to be there. One of the most powerful separation methods used in a workup is two-phase separation. You have two different immiscible liquids that will form two separate uh, phases, and you're relying on one of your products, or indeed one of the starting materials, or one of the other things there, being significantly more soluble in one of those phases than in the other. Usually one of those phases is going to be aqueous, water-based, and the other one will be organic. Nearly always they'll have different densities, and so if you shake them up and let them stand, they will separate into two phases, just like oil and vinegar salad dressing. Washing. It's got nothing to do with soap, but it does usually have something to do with water. Frequently, you will have several items in a mixture, and I've got them as green, red, and blue here. And let's say the green stuff is the product that you want, but the red and the blue uh, triangles and X's are impurities. These are more soluble in water. And so you can actually purify this by washing this organic solution containing all three with water. So if we add water and shake and then let it separate out, you will end up with two phases. The organic on the top, in this case, and the aqueous on the bottom. You'll notice that the blue and red items have moved predominantly down into the aqueous phase. All of the green product, which is what we want, is in the upper organic phase. There's still some impurity in there, but most of the impurity has gone down to the lower phase. At this point, we do a separation. We separate these two phases. We'll talk about how to do that in a minute. But the lower phase has got garbage in it. The upper organic phase is mostly green product, but we've still got a few blue and red impurities. If we again add water and wash, that is shake it up, the aqueous phase will go to the bottom again and all of the impurity will end up in the aqueous phase and the organic phase contains nothing but your desired green product. This is a separation process. It's always more efficient to do it multiple times than just a single wash. Sometimes changing the pH of the water wash will also help with the purification process. Let's say that you have an impurity in there, HA, which is an organic acid, which is quite organic soluble. However, if you wash this with base, that sodium hydroxide, the HA will combine with OH to form A minus ions plus water. And A minus, being a charged species, will not be soluble in organic at all. It will be very soluble in water. And so this will go to the aqueous phase, and you will make a much better separation of HA by converting it to the anion. When you are doing the separation, you will actually remove the lower phase of the liquid, that is, the more dense liquid. Sometimes that's going to be the aqueous phase, as it is on this side, and sometimes it's going to be the organic phase at the bottom. If you're ever in doubt as to which one it is, just add a couple of drops of water to the liquid, and the water will actually join the aqueous phase. Watch carefully. 
Once you have washed an organic phase a few times with water or with an aqueous phase, you'll have removed most of the polar water-soluble impurities. However, there'll probably be water itself left in the organic phase as an impurity. Usually this shows up with the organic phase being cloudy. Sometimes you'll even be able to see little droplets of water present. You'll have to get rid of the water. You do that by drying. Not with a towel, not with heat, but usually with some anhydrous salt, sodium sulfate or calcium chloride typically. Actually, performing a separation is fairly simple. You have your two phases in a conical bottom vial, as you see in this picture here. And this is actually why you have a conical bottom on the vial, so that smaller amounts are found in the middle. You use a Pasteur pipette to do the separation. You flatten the Pasteur pipette, place it in and all the way to the bottom of the vial, and then applying suction, you remove the lower phase into the Pasteur pipette, and the upper phase is left behind in the vial. In this demonstration, the organic phase is on top. We've colored it so that you can see it better on camera, but sometimes one phase will be colored, but in other cases, both of these phases are going to be colorless. Stand the vial up until you get a nice sharp separation, as you see here. Take the cap off, then take your Pasteur pipette, squeeze the bulb all the way, and put the tip all the way down to the bottom of the cone. Apply suction until you have the interface right down at the tip of the cone. And when you're there, remove and discard the lower phase into a separate beaker. Now we're going to have to wash the organic phase. We add an approximately equal amount of water. So here we have adding some water to this. And notice we've now got a bottom phase reappearing. And we'll mix it. Shake it up and wait for it to separate. Surprisingly quick separation there. Remove the cap. And again, remove the lower phase. In this case, that's the aqueous phase. Don't worry if you get just a couple of drops of organic in with you. That's not too much of a problem. We're now going to do this again, but with organic phase on the bottom, and it's a slightly different procedure. Again, you wash the two phases and let them settle so that you've got a nice separation. Remove the cap of your vial. And this time, you're going to be actually removing the organic phase, the stuff that you want. And you'll need to have a second vial to receive your uh, material. So again, use your Pasteur pipette and extract the organic phase as much as you can without taking any water in with it. There we go. And put it into a vial. You need a second vial because you're going to do the washing in the second vial. This is the extra water wash, which you discard, and bring in some more fresh water, or it may be a solution of some kind, aqueous material anyway. Add that, and we'll need to cap this second vial. Shake it up and wait till it separates. And again, this will now be placed into a third vial. You could use the original one if you've washed it out while waiting for this to separate. And that actually separated quite quickly. And again, flatten the Pasteur pipette, remove the organic phase, leaving as much water behind as possible transfer into another vial. And then this vial, which is the purified solution, the organic, with a little water in it, you'll need to dry. And use exactly the same steps as you did with a less dense organic fluid to dry this and bring it to completion. And now we're ready to remove the rest of the water, the moisture from the solvent itself. If you look closely, you can see blobs of water sticking to the glass. 
And there's also, right at the tip, I don't know if you can see this on camera, there's a little bit of moisture in the bottom of the cone of the vial here. It's now time to use some drying agent, but rather than have the drying agent actually do all the work and mop up the moisture there, we'll take as much of that organic phase as we can, leaving the water behind in the first vial. There we go. And this mechanical separation, just leaving the water behind, sticking to the glass, is actually quite an efficient way of doing the separation. You now need to use some drying agent. Here it is, anhydrous sodium sulfate. And use about the end of your scoop uh, spatula, about that much to start off with. Drop that in, preferably without spraying it on the countertop. Maybe a little bit more here. And again, put the cap on and swirl. The drying agent will not take effect immediately. It does take a few minutes for this. So put that like that, shake it up, and let it sit for a few minutes. The test of when it is finished is the water will, excuse me, the organic phase will go clear and the moist, the solid will probably clump. But you're looking for something that is very clear that you can read through. It usually takes about five minutes for this to happen. It's now been five minutes and this sample has in fact dried. And the way you tell that is twofold. First of all, you look at the liquid and you'll notice it's quite clear at this point. There's no cloudiness. The other thing to check is the white stuff at the bottom. That is the sodium sulfate, the drying agent. And when you shake it, you may see here that there's a blob that's going to stay stuck to the bottom. This is the sodium sulfate that has done its job, that has absorbed the water present. There's also some uh, loose sodium sulfate that is flowing around freely. This is excess, so you put in enough and a little bit extra. This is the right amount to have put in to dry your sample. This solution is now ready to be uh, extracted. You would just use a pasta or pipette to remove the liquid, transfer it to another vessel, leaving the solid, wet sodium sulfate behind. You should put that into the appropriate waste container as indeed you should put any sodium sulfate that you spill on the counter as I did earlier. In conclusion, two-phase separation is a means of purifying products of a reaction. This way you will have separation of one product from another based on differing solubilities in the two solvents. You will wash one solvent with more of the other to make a better separation you may need to dry organic solvents. You should now understand how to do a two-phase separation with organic solvents and aqueous solvents using microscale glassware.